In this video, I'm going to explain lane changing models. Lane change is a complex model because the decision to change lanes depends on number of objectives that can cause conflicts. The three objectives are first, decision to consider lane change, choice of target lane, and third, gap acceptance. So this diagram here helps evaluating reason for changing lanes in the order of importance. The first asked for is the lane change necessary. This corresponds to decision to consider lane change here. It has three response types, unnecessary, desirable, and essential. The lane change is considered unnecessary when the vehicle is in the lane that allows the intended turn. It is essential when vehicle is in different lane and about 10 seconds away from the intended turn. It is considered desirable when the vehicle is in different lane and about 10 to 50 seconds away from the intended turn. In the next step, selected target lane corresponds to choice of target lane here. Target lane is the lane that vehicles intended to move on to. It can either be on the right or left of the current lane. In the third step, ask, it asks for if the lane change is visible. And that depends on the gap acceptance. The lane change is considered visible when first subject vehicle decelerates or accelerates to move behind or in front of the vehicle in the target lane or when the following vehicle in the target lane decelerates to a low lane change for the subject vehicle. So there are several response types from here. If the lane change is visible for all, all lane change types, they can change to the target lane. If the lane change is not visible for desirable and, and unnecessary types, they have to remain in the present lane. For the essential lane change type, if the lane change is considered not visible due to lack of gap, they have to simulate driver courtesy in the target lane. So driver courtesy is when subject vehicle sends the request to the following vehicle. So it depends on the factor such as speed position and the driver response type of following vehicle. So if they were able to widen the gap through the driver courtesy, they can change to the target lane. So there are two types of lane change classification based on execution and gap. So based on the execution, there are either classified as mandatory or discretionary. So in the mandatory lane change, drivers are required to change lane due to a lane drop or yielding to traffic near a ramp. The example will be when you drive down in the US 101 in slow and you have to change from lane in the right to the left due to the emerging vehicles on the right. And in the discretionary lane change, Drivers change lane to improve perceived driving condition, and it is considered not urgent. The example will be when drivers change lane to pass a slow vehicle. So, in secondly, there are four types of lane change based on gap. First is when subject vehicle is influenced by both leading and trailing vehicle in the target lane. Second is when subject vehicle is only influenced by leading vehicle. Third, only rear vehicle influences. Fourth, last one is uh, lane free lane change, which means nothing in the target lane influences the subject vehicle's lane change. This diagram here shows breakdown of the gap during lane change. So the total gap needed for the lane change includes total clear gap plus vehicle length. So the total clear gap is sum of the lead gap and the lap gap. 
and this is a vehicle length. So lead gap is between the subject vehicle here and then the leading vehicle here. And the lag gap is between the subject vehicle here and then the lagging or the following vehicle here. The lane change is only possible when there is a sufficient lag and the lead gap for the subject vehicles to change onto. So in this slide, I'm going to talk about different approaches to the lane change model. So lane change model has is first divided into two types, driving assistance model and driving decision model. So under driving assistance model, there are two types, uh, collision, collision prevention model and automation model. Collision prevention model intends to improve the road safety. Therefore, it controls driver's lane change maneuvers and assists safe lane change. And on the other hand, automation model, it applies to perform driving tests partially or entirely. And both collision prevention model and automation model includes the adjustments to steering, steering wheel angle to control lateral motion and prevent any dangerous lane change. So I'm going to jump to the driving decision model now. So driving decision model also has two types, tactical decision model and operational decision models. So tactical decision model includes short term maneuvers. So example will be uh, when drivers speed up to pass a slow vehicle or maintain a desired speed. So time required for make this Decision making and execution is from 5 to 30 seconds. And on the other hand, operational decision model is actually shorter term maneuver than tactical. And it includes maneuvers to control vehicles. So example will be when deciding whether drivers should accept the gap or not. And then the time required for decision making and execution is less than five seconds. This illustration show how tactical lane change of the driver A, who wants to take the off ramp here, however, obstructed by the slow moving vehicle B. So tactical decision is based on decision to exit, traffic condition, and characteristics of driver and vehicle. So in the response A, one, the driver A decided to stay behind the slow moving vehicle B and accept the slow speed in order to remain in the lane that connects to the off ramp. In the second response, the driver A takes off, passes B and changes, back to, changes the lane back to take the off ramp here. Now I'm going to talk about two approaches to stimulate lane change, which are search algorithm approach and traffic characteristics approach. First, the search algorithm approach uses the explicit search process to estimate future position of the vehicle based on driver per perception and information. So it uses both tactical and operational lane change. So it first uses the tactical lane change to predict the future position of the vehicle based on search algorithm. Then it uses the operational lane changes to execute lane change maneuver based on surrounding traffic. And in the traffic characteristics approach, it assesses the association with the surrounding traffic characteristics. It also uses both tactical and operational. So it first uses tactical lane change decision based on the characteristics of current and anticipated future of surrounding traffic. Then in the operational model, it executes lane change based on characteristics of current surrounding traffic. Based on literature, there are a number of areas where further research are needed to improve the existing lane change models. 
So first, there has been little attention to the heavy vehicle drivers and the current models are based on passenger cars and has not explored the difference between passenger cars and heavy vehicles. Secondly, the current model mainly focused on decision and generally omitted execution. Excluding execution can Im have significant impact on estimated traffic flow characteristics. Therefore, including execution can increase the accuracy of the results from the simulations. Lastly, validation is based on macro level measures only. So currently, the accuracy is measured by comparing the measurements from macroscopic model with the obtained field data. However, the macroscopic traffic measure measurements are considered insufficient to test the performance of the lane change models. Therefore, the microscopic measurements are needed to examine the accuracy in detail.